Hi, teacher. Good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you? I am good, teacher. And you? I'm very well surviving here the Friday. Yes, Friday. <laughs> Only that is good for me. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing. But anyways, we almost finished the class. We're going to wait a few minutes just for the rest of the people to come to the class. Hey, okay, teacher. Good evening. Hello, good evening, Carla. How are you? I am fine. And you? I'm surviving here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to wait just a few minutes for the rest of the classmates. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Welcome to the class. Okay. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? It's uh, yesterday I'm sleeping. Yeah. The thing is that it's very tired, right? To come from yes. work and then to the English <laughs> class. And maybe sometimes we need to do other things. So, but anyways, that's the yes, only way yes. for us to, to learn. Good morning. Morning is a uh, uh, five uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Imagine. Yeah. Sorry. Imagine that. Yes. <laughs> it's a uh, exhausto. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, for Friday is is exhausto. So tomorrow, if you can, you you need to rest. Ya son último día. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, sorry. Okay. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. Today is the last class of the week. And uh, 
we're going to start checking about the platform. So let's see here. So we are going to check. Yeah, today is the class number 10. And well, actually we're going to check about the, um, uh, the attendance. Let's see here. There's nothing else here on the platform, okay? So let's see. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good night. Good, good evening. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening. Flor de Maria Carballo. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Osmín Baires Solórzano. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good evening. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good, good evening. Good evening. Ana Michelle Guevara. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Perfect. Okay, now, yes, we're going to start the class of today. So let's check. We're going to start with two videos. So the, these are short ones. So what we're going to do is, as usual, we're going to check uh, the uh, what you understand about this one, okay? And then we're going to share. So. Let's see if you are able to hear and listen this one. Okay, just rewind. This is the largest of Amazon's distribution centers. Obviously an important day for Amazon, and really important, obviously maybe the most important part of their business distribution centers, 40 in the U.S., and uh, this is the largest of them here in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, 1.2 million square feet. I want to visually take you through some of the things that you see just from right here, my vantage point here, up above this factory, this distribution center, or, or fulfillment center, as they call it, Amazon speak. What you see behind me, those little colors back there, are row upon row upon row of all the kinds of random stuff sold by Amazon. Amazon. There is no particular order to the way those things are stuffed on those shelves. They come in off of trucks uh, as they're lined up down the block here in Phoenix, Arizona, taken off, unpacked, and stowed by hand and scanned with little scanners, put in all these shelves. And as we pull back here and start to see some of the workers, Amazon brings in 50,000 seasonal workers here to work in, in uh, fulfillment centers such as this. And then they go out with these scanners row by row and pick, looking at the orders as they come into their scanner and find these items, put them all together in discrete groupings to be mailed off to the customers. And then they go on to assembly lines and go through a packing uh, sorting process, get wrapped up, put in boxes and sped through a conveyor belt system onto trucks and mailed uh, back to shoppers back at home. The numbers are simply amazing here. Uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, they've added so many distribution centers this year. When I stood here a year ago, the company had 69 distribution centers. They are spending, as I said, they have 80 now. So they're spending billions to get to this point. This company is in expansion mode. 
of the, of the uh, capital expenditures of the last five years, over 20% has happened in the last year. So they are building out this business. If you think of CapEx as a way, as sort of a forward-looking indicator, as big as this business has become, they're planning on becoming a lot bigger and investing really heavily right now to get large. So the distribution centers like this all over the world. Deirdre? And, and Corey, I mean, what do the early numbers tell us so far about shopping last week? So, you know, this whole idea of Cyber Monday was, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and call it a fraud, or at least a promotion, because when this organization, Shop.com, came out with that number back in 2005, it was not the biggest cyber shopping day of the year. It was probably number eight. But about two or three years ago, that became the number one shopping day in the world, and it is that today. For Amazon, as a leading online retailer, this will likely be the biggest day of the year. Add to that the numbers out of Comscore that we saw over the weekend, which said that Amazon was the fastest growing site online, which is sort of amazing. Here you have the biggest company online growing faster than any other company online, Walmart at number two. So the numbers we see is that the growth year over year overall, uh, online shopping at 18%, Amazon growing at the fastest rate of the large retailers. Uh, so impressive numbers coming out of Amazon. Amazon's not going to tell us how they're doing today specifically, but we know from the numbers out of Comscore that they're doing quite well indeed. Very well. What did you understand about? I know it was fast, but anyways, what did you understand? I don't understand it. I don't no. understand. Nothing at all. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Anybody understood anything? Teacher, he talked about the employees work for packet for sell for for uh, Cyber Monday. It's a tradition days in the United States. Very good. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, he was reporting for the news and he was reporting about Cyber Monday. I, I'm not sure what year was, was probably 2015, 2016, uh, but it was a while ago. And uh, I mean, Maybe the first thing that you need to analyze there is the size of that distribution center. It was huge, right? It, there were lots of people and lots of packages there. Did you see that? A lot of things. I think, oh. I think that says that have 15 employees for, for this special day. Yeah, they, they have lots of people working. I mean, scanning things with the, with the scanning pistols, you know, and checking what is the product, where it's going to be uh, sent, a lot of things. What else did you understand on this one? Anybody else? Uh, related to the, the special days for, for sales, increase the sales uh, for the company. Uh, the reaction um, about the the huge uh, the huge package in the space see a lot of employees. Yeah. I, I am not sure that the the data is is exactly, but I heard. 5,000 employee for this center in Phoenix, uh, um, Phoenix, Arizona, in United States. But the, for me, it was impact the, the <laughs> a lot of people and the, a lot of inventory. A lot in mind to manage that amount of people and that amount of packages. I mean, that must be a very good logistics, right? It should be, I mean, something that you need to analyze in advance and plan and, and tell everybody to train people. You need to be here, do this, send this to the other side. I mean, that is a lot. Any other opinion on this video? I... He was talking about the number of packeting. A packet? No, packet, packet, packet. Packages, uh -huh. 
the day distribution uh, on Amazon. And the sales uh, they have made in the last week, different items and the quality of logistic uh, they use, more or less. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's huge, it's immense. Did you get to listen how many distribution centers uh, were working that day? How many distribution centers they had at that time? A million days. Uh, no, they say that they were investing billions, actually. Uh -huh. Billions, yeah. a lot of money, a lot of money. But distribution centers, did you listen to that one? Anybody get to know that? I, okay, I, teacher, I only, excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, I only understand uh, the man spoke of the, a great company uh, in the world of Scanning. Continue in the company. Very only good. understand it. Okay, good, perfect. Ah, he was speaking very fast. That is a very good exercise, actually, that you can do to listen to the news in English. It's very fast. And they are going to speak in a rate that is, I mean, but if you watch the news in English only, let's say, 20 minutes every day, maybe from Monday to, to Friday, you are going to improve the listening and get to know more vocabulary. So that is a good exercise. Um, so he was saying that they had at that time 80 distribution centers, 80 places like that in the United States. So in mind that, that is a lot, a lot, a lot of money, a lot of, and the logistics, of course, that, that is something that should be, I mean, a different level. Let's watch another video, okay, that I have here. This is also not that big, so. Fulfillment by Amazon, it says. Let's check it out. Amazon fulfillment centers are complex operations in vast spaces. Our prep, labeling, and packing requirements are designed for our fulfillment center associates to handle your units as efficiently as possible. This allows us to process millions of orders every day and helps Amazon provide the best experience for our customers. Before you ship your products to Amazon Fulfillment Centers, it is important to make sure they are packaged properly and are e-commerce ready so they can be quickly received and available for sale. Each unit that arrives at our Fulfillment Center that does not meet our requirements delays the receipt of your inventory and increases the risk that a unit could be lost, damaged, or incorrectly received. When your shipment arrives, an Amazon associate scans the shipping label to ensure each has a shipment ID that exists in the system and that the shipment is at the proper fulfillment center. Multiple boxes must not be taped or banded together. To avoid any confusion, your shipping boxes should not have any other scannable barcodes except the shipping label. Boxes that do not match our size requirements require special handling, which delays the receiving process. The next step in the inbound process is opening the shipping box. If the shipping label is placed over the seam of the box, it can be easily damaged in transit, become unreadable for carrier and Amazon systems, or be destroyed as the Amazon associate opens the box. Place shipping labels on flat surfaces to ensure that the label remains scannable throughout the inbound process. An unscannable shipment label can cause delays in receiving your units. The best packing materials, or dunnage, to use are foam, air pillows, or full sheets of paper. Packing peanuts and shredded paper slow down the receiving process. For this reason, we do not allow loose packaging materials to be used in inbound shipments. Amazon also verifies that individual units in the shipping boxes have scannable barcodes. Each unit should only have one scannable barcode. If a unit does not have a scannable barcode or has multiple scannable barcodes, it will be sidelined for proper identification by an Amazon problem solver. Case-packed units must only have barcodes on the individual units and not on the outer carton. Barcodes on the outer carton could lead to multiple items being received as one unit. The associate evaluates if the units need additional prep to ensure that they won't become damaged during storage and shipment to the customer. 
If PrEP is required but was not performed prior to being received at the fulfillment center, the units are sidelined for special handling. Also, items should not have any loose packaging. Products that require additional PrEP upon arrival at the fulfillment center are delayed from being placed into inventory. Depending on the number of units requiring PrEP, this delay could be two hours or two days. Units that don't require additional PrEP are sent to be received. During the receiving process, the associate performs a six-sided check of each unit to ensure the unit is not damaged. Please ensure each unit is packaged properly to avoid being damaged in transit. Also, the associate performs a title verification. If the title and product do not match, the unit is sent to an Amazon problem solver. The unit is now received. The unit is routed to be stowed. If there were problems in any part of the check-in or receive process, units will be directed to the problem solve area. Units that must be sidelined and evaluated by a problem solver take longer to receive. Problem solving is a very detailed process, so time is taken to ensure each problem is resolved properly. Once the problem has been solved, the units are received and placed in a tote. Units that have been successfully received, even those that required Amazon to perform special prep or problem solving, now take a trip on the conveyor. These units are sent to be stored in inventory. Every unit is scanned into a location so that Amazon knows its exact location. Now, when a customer orders your product, it can be quickly picked, packed, and shipped to them without delay. Amazing. Okay, what did you understand on this one? This was a very good video. Is they describe the process. Sorry, sorry, Rosita, yeah. go ahead, please. They describe the fulfillment process. My God, was amazing. Um, I would like to work there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's amazing. They describe each step of the of the fulfillment, and I oh. They describe each process. For example, I uh, they receive the package. Uh, they I I the the video uh, take my attention when they say that um, when they verify the the label. If the label is damaged, they have to change it. Mm -hmm. And they um, they the they package the the things or the the objects with foam foam or air pillow. I know the name. We receive the package and we receive a, a something like a pillow, and I say, oh, what is that? Is and I it's an air pillow. <laughs> when we receive the packages. Uh, I like to explode <laughs> that pillow, yeah. and yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. I I write many things, but I, in a few words, they describe the fulfillment process, and every step. It's 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 a very very careful, very careful. Uh, uh, processes only the 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 line of uh, when you have a, a mistake or something have an error you stop it and you have to check it again oh my god it's like here <laughs> oh yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> yes i like it i like it yeah. for example my sister my sister lives in the u.s and a few, few, no, one month ago, uh, she buy something by Amazon, but the package never, never, uh, she never received the package uh, about three, three weeks. And she calls and she asks for the, the package. And okay, we send you again. And they send the package again. But at the end, she receives the package 
twice. <laughs> and she called and say, I received another package. It doesn't matter. It's yours. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Yes, because it's cheaper. Um, in preferred the company, uh, do you say they had leave, teacher? Leave, uh -huh, leave. leave the other package because it's more expensive. The process of return the for the box mistake mistake for the box is question the the, the, the uh, is only only. The decision for the cost is. That is true. Yeah, it's totally cheaper to, to say, no, keep that package, don't worry. Because if they send it, they have to pay for the label, they have to pay for the package. And the, I mean, that is not good, right? So uh, very good. Yeah, I, I really like this one. And as we were saying, it's just the fulfillment. But let's discuss about that um, a little bit later because I want to ask any other opinion about this video. Anybody else's? Teacher, Amazon have a good logistic for he, he for her per, no for their pro, uh, product uh, to have a other a, a good process for the package and a, a good process for the transportation uh, their their product and to uh, save the other product uh, because it's very important for Amazon to uh, save each product that that's delivered to the customer. That is it. I mean, it's, it's so important for them. They really take care about that kind of situation, right? So, very good. Any other opinion on the video? They mentioned that Amazon process millions of order every day. Million of order. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is is that logistics is one one of the best in the world. Of course, there are mistakes sometimes. Um, sometimes you don't receive the package or you receive the package damaged, but it's not the most. I mean, it's it's just a, a little percentage, right? Uh, so I, I really liked it because for, uh, this is like the first part of the process only. I mean, when they receive the package from the, from the store, right, from the producer. So thousands of producers across the U.S., they, when they place an order, when they receive an order, they go and take that one to, to Amazon. They send it. But Amazon takes the time to check that everything is fine, right? So they, they don't. I mean, maybe here in El Salvador, we would say, ah, oh, this is that package and put it there, right? But no, they check the label. They replace the label if they have to. They open the package to check that everything is fine. That is the right product. That is the right color. About the, uh, the address where it's going to be shipped. And they check also that there is a label in the package itself. And uh, they replace it if something is damaged. I mean... They, they really do a very good job. Even if the, the producer itself, they don't do a good job, they, they put that nice face for the customers to say, oh, this is nice, I like this product. So, and, and this is just the first when part. You, I mean. When it's a special product, they, they sign the box that, because that product is special. For example, maybe a, a something or glass or, or or Tyler, 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 yeah. Yeah, Tyler. Uh -huh. And they sign the box. So it's a very good thing. Also, you can see that there is a, a special department for uh, problem solving. So there are packages that they don't know what to do. They need to be replaced. They need to dis do something about it. So they send that to the other department. So that people that is specialized in this kind of situation, they, they know what to do. The problem is that there is a delay in the shipping, right? So they say that it was around two hours or two days. So if your package is delayed, something happened. I mean, they made something about that one. Uh, they fixed something. So that was very, very good. Perfect. Any other question or any other comment about this video? 
how many labels, teacher? Uh, how sorry? do you say label? How do you say label? Or what's meaning label? A label is like the sticker that you put with the information on the box. Vigneta, vigneta, sticker. That is it, yeah, that is it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, so we are going to uh, see another video. This is the last one, and then we're going to move on to the class. So let's pay attention. It's also about Amazon. So let's see how it goes. Ever wonder how Amazon gets your packages to you so quickly? It's done with a symphony of machine learning, automation, and our amazing associates. Join us as we see that in action in an Amazon Fulfillment Center. Welcome to an Amazon Robotics Sortable Fulfillment Center. This FC is one of more than 50 worldwide, where robots work alongside our amazing employees. Let's go inside. At Amazon, we're customer obsessed. We're also obsessed with the safety of our employees. In April of 2020, Amazon began enhancing its temperature screening process by implementing thermal camera systems throughout multiple business lines in North America. Now that our temperature is not detected as high, we're free to continue the tour. Today, we're going to follow the path of products from where they're received stowed, then picked, packed, and put on a truck for distribution. The inbound process starts with forecasting and ordering before anything arrives to the FC. Powered by AWS, Amazon's forecasting engine is used for over 400 million products daily. Let's go to the receiving area. As you'll see, we put a lot of energy into our logistics. It's a symphony of people, AWS, software and other high-tech components. The result is a coordination between our great employees and the finely honed computer systems we've evolved for more than 20 years. Our employees are the heart and soul of our operation. Some are military veterans. Some are active members of the community. Some are employees that work here with their loved ones. They're all amazing. Trailers full of vendor and small and medium business seller items arrive at these bay doors by appointment. Employees unload the trailers and begin the process of staging items located at their receiving workstations. This FC carries millions of items of inventory, and using the service known as Amazon Aurora, we manage our inventory transactions and other relational database needs. At this station, you can see how our inbound associate receives a product and how those products are stowed in our inventory. Amazon robotic drive units are activated when an associate logs into their workstation to perform their task. Storage pods arrive facing the correct side to stow items into inventory. Every time an associate touches a product, they scan a unique barcode for that item, which we call the Amazon Standard Identification Number, or ASIN. That's stored in our inventory system so we know what the quantity and location of that item is at any given time. To manage our inventory history, we use Amazon Neptune, a fast, reliable, fully managed graph database service from AWS. Now, you might expect that we'd organize this in a way where similar items are stowed together. For example, all electronics would be stored in the same section. However, at Amazon, we've found that it's more efficient to stow products using a randomized method. That's why you'll see a variety of items in each inventory bin. Once that process has been completed, a physical and digital match is created in our systems. So just a few seconds after an item is stowed, you can order it on Amazon.com. Looking at a station next door, we see a great example of computer vision helping with automation. When an associate scans an item, you'll see magenta lights over some of the bins in the pod. This lets the associate know not to place that item in those locations, as artificial intelligence-driven logic has determined that the bin is full, that placing an item there may negatively impact the pod's overall weight distribution, or that a visually similar item is there and may cause confusion later when an associate needs to pick the item. The associate can then place the item in any of the other bins. But computer vision doesn't stop there. It will also detect what bin the associate reached into and knows where that item is placed. As one final step, it will take a picture of the pod and use image recognition to count the number of items in the bin, making sure the count matches what is recorded in our tracking systems. When the machine learning model has low confidence, it sends images to people to classify and train more ground truth data for our machine learning model, which operates in Amazon SageMaker and Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth from AWS. 
This allows us to perform ongoing inventory reconciliation, avoiding the scheduled inventory counts that are often done at least once a year at other organizations. Now, what's up with those robots we see moving the pods around? There are thousands of robot drive units spread throughout each floor, helping associates fulfill customer orders daily. Amazon Robotics operate in dedicated fenced-off areas within the FC, which account for about 65% of the facility's total square footage. The drive units travel to various locations in our FC to pick up mobile shelves of product and deliver them to employees who are working at ergonomic workstations. To navigate, they read 2D barcodes on the floor, and locations are tracked in real time using our own created robotic operating software. Our Amazon Robotics team has developed more than 100 services to support operations and uses AWS extensively in the Amazon fulfillment centers. Only specially trained individuals wearing custom safety equipment are allowed to enter this area, but on our virtual tour, we're allowed to walk through this restricted area. Each sortable FC has over 1 million unique items, helping us with our goal to provide Earth's largest selection. You may be thinking, okay, robots are great, but I just ordered an item, how is it picked? To answer that, let's go to a pick station. Here we see a similar layout as our stow station. Once you hit the buy button on amazon.com, our systems will queue the robots to find the inventory pod with the item you ordered. Once that item has been identified, the robot will bring it to our associate. A screen at the associate station will show them a picture and quantity of the item they need to pick. The same visual bin inspection system is used as during stow, except this time, instead of lighting up bins where items should not be placed, the system lights up in a white light where that item is. The associate identifies and grabs the item, placing it in the yellow tote signified by the green light and pushes the button acknowledging that the item was placed there. When the system detects that the tote is full, the light flashes and the associate pushes the full tote back to a series of conveyors and replaces it with a new one that was automatically brought to their station. At this stage, associates are picking items for different customers in batches. The two types of picking processes we focus on are single item orders and multiple item orders. The single item orders contain only one item per customer order. We fill up a yellow tote full of single item orders weighing up to 25 pounds. The single item order yellow totes will then be routed to the singles pack lines for packaging. The multiple item orders contain more than one item per order. If your multiple item order of six items are all in this building, then it's possible that your order is being picked up by up to six different people picking items from six different robots, which all need to be brought together for your single shipment. Your items will be placed in any available yellow tote and routed to our multiple item order assembly stations. It's at that point that we will reap in your individual items into one customer order. Then, once all of your items are together, it's packing time. To help improve efficiency and also reduce environmental impact of the packaging, the size of box or envelope is automatically selected by a machine learning algorithm. Even the correct length of tape is determined by machine learning and automatically dispensed. If needed, protective packaging materials are added. A barcode is placed on the package, it's sealed up, and away we go. That barcode will be important for the next stage that we call SLAM. But what if I order two items and those items are in two different FCs? Do I get one box or two? The answer is, it depends. Our first priority is to get you the item at the date and time that we promised when you placed the order. The second priority is to do that at the lowest cost possible and with the lowest environmental impact so we can continue to pass on lower prices to you. With those two things in mind, we use machine learning to figure out if it's optimal to ship to you from each FC in two different packages or ship an item from one FC to the other, combine them there, and ship to you in a single package. You're now seeing our SLAM line in process. SLAM is an acronym which stands for Scan, Label, Apply, and Manifest. The technology here scans that barcoded sticker placed on the package in pack and immediately knows to print the correct shipping label on the package. This is the first time your name and address are placed on the package. So how do we know which carrier to use? That's also determined by machine learning. In the space of a few seconds, an algorithm is run to determine the optimal delivery carrier to get you the package on time and at the lowest cost possible. There are also quality control measures in place here. Following this, the box is weighed and the weight is checked against the item's known weight. If the weight is off, the order will be routed to a special location. 
From there, an associate will open the package and take the applicable action. We're now entering the final stages. After passing all of those quality control measures, the package is routed onto another series of conveyors to a location where the label is scanned. The conveyors then automatically send each package down the correct chute, where it will be packaged on a semi-trailer for shipment to another FC, or a sortation center for final delivery to you. There are approximately 17.5 miles of conveyor belts in this FC. In order to run reliably, every single day, they're monitored via AWS IoT services. AWS IoT Greengrass helps here by allowing devices to act locally on the data they generate while still taking advantage of the cloud. Events, in particular from the machinery, are sent to Lambda functions in AWS that trigger step functions. These workflows then coordinate RME operations to maintain the equipment, perform inspections, replace faulty motors and belts, and other types of activities. We even collaborate with some of our automation suppliers using AWS ML models to predict equipment failures and address issues before they arise. Thank you for visiting our Amazon Sortable Robotics Fulfillment Center. We hope you enjoyed our virtual tour. Okay, the future is now. So, what did you understand about this one, anybody? Well, to me, it's um, incredible uh, as, well, a big um, enterprise can automate, automate or that kind of um, work that really, really um, is individual to all the clients to attend them and do as in this case, in this case with technology and also personalize. Very good, perfect. Yes, actually, if I mean, I know that during these two weeks we've been speaking about logistics and a lot of letters, but this is logistics. What we saw in this video that is logistics. I mean, is to manage that amount of things in a perfect way. It's amazing. It's very yeah. Very they use they use many uh, tools for do that. Human technology, many stuff. Machines, right? Yes, and take the, and take the one the better. That is it. So of course, a large companies they can invest more money, right? But we here in El Salvador we can do. Not like that, but we can do very good logistics processes as well. So that is possible, definitely. Any other opinion? Teacher. Yep. Good evening. Good evening. Um, for me, I think the um, there are there are a uh, more more. Uh, system inventory in formatting is incredible because it is a register uh, all products or areas uh, in checks uh, quantity or quality because in the in the in the room in the band uh, the camera is incredible yeah it's amazing right it's stunning i, I don't know it's I don't have words to describe this one. I would like to work there as well, <laughs> to be honest with you. Any other opinion, any other comment? It's amazing. Teacher. It's amazing, teacher. I, it's an, how do you say, utopia in English. <laughs> utopia. Utopia, utopia it's yeah. A, yes, utopia. Oh my <laughs> God, imagine ordering every, every every product by the category for example in my case the cctv the cctv system the access oh my god was amazing <laughs> only a, a, a machine it's a machine it's, it's the robotic is amazing and is in the united states imagine in japan Oh my God, I can't imagine, <laughs> I can't imagine that. 
Yeah, Japanese people, they are very disciplined. And they yes. Really, yes. They really but it it is amazing. interesting that the, the water station are ergonomic. Yes. It's good. Yeah. Teacher, it is amazing what's behind a brand because those of you who have who have had the opportunity to buy do not see all the work that was done for a package. It's, it's amazing really because it's a big world, big process, big uh, technology. Uh, I, I, I don't uh, imagine uh, how, uh, how time a investment in this process. That is true. I mean, this is, is I don't know. I hope the, the heaven is like that whenever we go there. Okay, there are some things that I, I, I checked into that video. For first of all, did you notice that they say that they don't put everything together? I mean, uh, there is not that technology items are here sports items are here is i mean it's a mess one here one thing here one thing that is very interesting any person might say oh everything has to be organized in different levels and different no they don't do that it's like whatever this goes here and if we scan that one and if we label that one we know where is it and if one person orders that one we know what we're going to do so that was amazing the other thing that I really liked is how they use technology. I mean, um, if you work in logistics or something like that, I invite you to read a little bit more about servers. Um, they use AWS because it's from, from Amazon. I work for Google and we have amazing tools, servers that are, I mean, you can do a lot of things from your house. They're sitting down in your house. You can go and and create a server and create a lot of things. The most basic, for example, some people in El Salvador, they use servers to, to uh, mine Bitcoins, for example, that is possible. But you can do many other things. And there are many other levels of, of technology, for example, machine learning. Machine learning is a model that you can get or you can train in a way that uh, the system is going to analyze by itself, you don't have to think about it. They are going to do that one. They are going to check what is the trend, what is the behavior, so and decide what is the best next step. So for example, here they use machine learning to, to decide what is the best career, right? So based, based in, the, in the package, in the location where it's going to be delivered, uh, many things, the machine learning just do the math and says, okay, this is the thing. There is nobody there sitting down saying, oh my goodness, this goes to New York and I'm going to, no. Machine learning, I mean, that is good. There is also another thing that they mentioned that is internet of things. That is also a very good level of technology. And it's not that complicated, you know? Sometimes it's just a matter for you to go and create a server and start playing with that one. And you will be able to do a lot of things. So that is another thing that I really liked it. And of course, the whole thing. Uh, Carla mentioned something. How much time was invested on this one? Do you imagine somebody saying, oh, let's create a logistic system that comes with this and this and this? And, I mean, and the good thing is that maybe the boss says, yes, let's do that one. Here in El Salvador, it's like we go and say, let's do this. And the boss says, mm -hmm. I don't know. That is too expensive, right? But to listen to your people sometimes is also very important. Sometimes they come with very good ideas and you can say, okay, let's try, let's investigate, let's research, right? Maybe it's not as yes, we are going to do that, but we can research on that one. Okay, any other question before we move on? That's this video uh, was recorded recording after the pandemic because they mentioned in April 20, 
21, they put the thermal cameras uh, system yeah, to, read the te to read the temperature in the people that enter in the building. Yeah. So the, the I mean, that, that is very good. I mean, because they use technology for everything. I imagine that, I mean, here in El Salvador, somebody is there taking their temperature. Now I go to the supermarket, they, they don't do that anymore. They, it's like, go ahead and buy whatever you want to buy, right? Yes, only in Sima have a thermal, thermal a camera that takes to the temperature, mm -hmm. but they are so very expensive. Yeah, they are very expensive, mm -hmm, but yeah. sometimes saves time. I mean, in my, instead of having a people there in front all yes. the time. Yes, you, have you only uh, buy some of them and easy. Yeah, that is it. So it's amazing. And another thing is that they really care about people. So that is something that is also very nice. All right. Okay, so the, the topic for today is advantages of, of outsourcing a 3PL service provider. So there are many advantages about this one, definitely. And Nelson told me he wants to read the first one. So Nelson, could you please read this one? Yes, teacher. The dry cost saving. Third party logis, firma specialist is logis and tools have a more extensive network that your company oh, your company supply supply chain function. They had exclusive relationship within the logic sector, sector, and can have greater influence during negotiation. They can also help to offer greater volume discount to client, or as this can minimize overhead costs. Be partnering, be partnering, by with partnering. A 3P, partner, sorry, with a 3PR supply chain management firm. You can also save on making how infrastructure, infrastructure, investment, as is that can provide transportation, warehouse space, staff, and striking technology, among other things. Very good. Definitely, the first one is to save money, right? Drive cost saving. That is, that is the main objective of logistics. Definitely. Very interesting that in the video they say that uh, to decide whether they're going to do one or the other thing. The first one it was uh, to deliver the package on time and the time that they promised, and then to save some money to save some costs. So that is interesting because they really care more about the customer satisfaction than the money that they can make. But of course, logistics is about money. So okay. it says here, go ahead. In the, uh, Amazon, Amazon apply the three PR and because in, in the reside in, in the in the problem, in the processing, in the delivery and the crime. The thing is that they are an outsourcing. So they are they are the ones that distribute many things, but they don't produce anything, right? So they have people that send the products and then they resell it, not resell it, but they distribute them. So they are actually a 3PL, but they, they are an outsourced. So that is it. Of course, they are very large. Okay. So it says here, third party logistics firms specialize in logistics and thus have a more extensive network than your company supply chain function. Definitely, right? If you get a third party outsourcing, they have more resources than you. So it's going to be better. They have more trucks, systems, people. It's going to be easier. They have exclusive relationship within the logistics sector and can have greater influence during negotiations. So definitely. So they can get better deals because they have the contacts outside. Also, it says they can also help to offer greater volume discounts to clients. All of these can minimize overhead costs. So when they have contacts and they promise to, to work together, sometimes the pricings decrease and you as a producer, you are going to have more money. Then the last part says, by partnering with a 3PL supply chain management firm, you can also save on making huge infrastructure investments 
as it can provide transportation, warehouse space, staff, and tracking technology, among other things. So resources, again, they have all the resources. So it's better for you to, to invest in a partnership than to buy trucks, than to buy machines, technology, to train people to, I mean, that is maybe too much. Any questions on the first one? Okay, so the next one is going to be for, let's see, Osmin. Yes, teacher. Focus. No, Focus. I get it. The first one, please. Oh, just, 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 just. Okay. Get access to expertise and experience. In today, complex global market uh, scenario, it is told to anticipate, anticipate, anticipate and comment the internal expertise in all the capacities and regions. Region required a L service provider has knowledge and experience in matter such as transport, documentation, import and export, international com compliance, compliance and economic regulation. For instance, for instance, business looking to expand into international markets can benefit from the logistic uh, Plan uh, logis logistics support and now how that their partner can provide thereby reducing cost uh, delays, putting down the cycle time and marking the entry into a new region. Or excuse me, it's, it's, it's smaller. Very good, perfect. So definitely get access to expertise and experience, meaning that you are going to hire, you are going to partner people that really know their business. They have experience. They have done this a lot of times. So let's review again. It says, in today's complex global market scenario, it is tough. Do you know what is tough? Anybody? What is tough? Okay, I will tell you, tough is like hard, difficult, something like that. So it is tough to anticipate and accommodate internal expertise in all the capacities and regions required. I mean, logistics requires many things. You can see that one, technology, machines, training people, knowing about careers, knowing about uh, laws, many things. So if you want to do it yourself, it's going to be very hard. And it says, a 3PL service provider has knowledge and experience in matters such as transport, documentation, import and export, international compliance, and economic regulations. For instance, businesses looking to expand into international markets can benefit from the logistics support and know how that their partner can provide thereby reducing costly delays. I mean, this is going to be, they are the experts. That is it. They know many, many things about that one. So it's better for you to get a company that does that for you. Good, questions on this one? Okay, the next one is going to be for Gloria Elizabeth. Focus on core competence. Sourcing lo logistics will give your organization the leeway to focus on the on the each core competence instead of getting involved in the management of um, of non-core but critical functions. Very good. Business, 
I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, your business can enjoy the benefits of logistical exper expertise without uh, deploying international resources. What do you understand about this one, Gloria? Sorry, teacher. Not many, okay. That is very easy, actually. It says focus on core competences, meaning that you as a producer, you are going to, instead of thinking about logistics, the, the transportation, documentation, and all those things, you are going to better get uh, everything focused on producing good products at the right price, and then get a partner so they can move everything. They can get in, in charge of this one. So it's going to be a better on this situation. So leeway, do you know what is leeway? I was reading that it's like a freedom. Very good. So it's freedom in a free way. Uh -huh. uh, to move, to move in a free way, to, uh -huh. to have the freedom to move here or the other way, depending on the situation. Okay. Very good. Uh, and then it says the, in the management of non-core. What is non-core? Core is something like an important part. Okay, so that is like the 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 most important, the the center of the business. So um, what is of non-core? Mm -hmm. uh, what is non-core? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Um. It's not important, but exactly. critical. Yeah, it's not important. I mean, it's not critical, but it's important. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's like, it's not the, the essential of the business, but it's something that you need to do, right? Because it's going to, to impact your business. Very good. Okay, the other one is going to be for, uh, let's see. Mayra, could you please read Game Flexibility? Yes, teacher. Gain flexibility and scalability. Another advantage of third-party logistics in supply chain management is that it offers enterprise the flexibility and scalability to utilize, utilize, utilize. utilize <laughs> supply and distribution <laughs> resources based on current business needs. Thus, we when sales are down, there are no redundant, redundant investment and unutilized resources. And when there's surge in demand, enterprise can upscale. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Um, I understand that this, 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 gave uh, the enterprise uh, focuses on, uh, on business needs. Uh, for example, uh, give the logistics to other companies that work with supply chain management. Very good, perfect. So they, uh, you can get as a producer flexibility and scalability, meaning, meaning that uh, for example, did you see the video on Amazon, right? So uh, for Cyber Monday, there were a lot of people working there for a lot of products. So you as a producer, you don't, uh, you don't have to worry about that one. Amazon is going to worry about that. So uh, that means that if you, in this month, you produce a thousand products, they are going to deliver it for you. But if suddenly some uh, the products is selling is around 1 million. You don't have to purchase more trucks, more systems, more hire more people. You just tell to the retailer or to the 3PL, hey, I need this service. We need more service. I'm going to pay you more, but you need to distribute this. So that is scalability. So you are going to be flexible. I need more now. I don't need that more much right now. So you can go up and down uh, according to the need of your business. Good. So the next one is going to be for, uh, let's see, 
Pamela, is Pamela from here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first, uh, enable business growth and market exp expansion. The role of third party logistic in supply chain management is to drive business growth by give, giving companies access to markets where they are, don't have establishments, established, 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 established. Uh -huh. uh, sorry. Uh, being able to manage an inventory in the new market without having to spend money and warehousing. Equipment and labor can save money as well as the effort of learning to the, the logistical nuances and of a new market. Very well, perfect. What do you understand about this one, Pamela? Um, uh, well, it's about uh, to, uh, well, I understand as, um, uh, for the that kind of um, uh, uh, but uh, different business that they don't give um exactly a a, a, a establishment or a present uh, a physical uh, a store they give us as uh, as a services with a um, uh, to uh, um, this kind of industries to establish to another in another uh, section and maybe that maybe they can give us. Okay, very well, perfect. So one of the advantages of having a three PL, a third party logistics, is that you are since you are not going to worry or focus about logistics distribution and things like that. You can then. Uh, focus on micro expansion to have more products, more colors, more sizes, things like that. So you can in manage the inventory in a different way and uh, get to more customers. So that will be at the end. Good, perfect. The next one is going to be improve customer satisfaction and it's for Sandra. Improve customer satisfaction. All the upper size TPA benefits will lead to improve service and response and time, timely developments, and greater greater brand reliability. This translates to satisfies customer. The fundamental goals of all business. Very good, perfect. So definitely improve customer satisfaction is something that your 3PL can do. For example, you saw in the video, right? In Amazon, when the package is in not, not good condition. So they have a standard of quality. So whenever a customer receives the package, they are happy. So that is the most important thing. So receive the, package, receive the packages and on time, on time in, in condition perfect. Very good, so that is it. The uh, three, third party logistics is going to be in charge of that as well. So there is a word that is very nice there, reliability. So you are going to believe that the three uh, third party logistics is going to do a very good job and that the customer is going to be satisfied at the end. So very that is important logistic good. Yeah, so it's an advantage if you have a very good partner for third party logistics. Okay, uh, we are not going to check that right now because we're going to check the uh, attendance, of course. Let's see. Ada, Patricia, Linares, Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana, Stephanie, Martinez, Flores. Present. Good. Ana, Selmi, Chavez. Present, teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. 
Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present teacher. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solórzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to continue with another video. Uh, this is not that big. As usual, let's pay attention and check what you understand about this, okay? So, here we go. Okay, no words here, only letters. Questions for you. Uh, we checked already some advantages. And also this video was about advantages of outsourcing for a 3PL. So the question is, which one do you remember? What are some advantages of getting 3PL or 4PL or 5PL? Tell me now. What do you remember? Reduce costs. Very good. So that is one of the most important, right? To reduce costs. Any other? Yes, reduce the fixed costs for the business and its benefits related to the economy of scale of the process in the process. Very good. Definitely. So the processes and procedures also need to be reduced. Any other? access to new technology that is very interesting because sometimes you as a company you don't have that kind of technology but whenever you have a partner uh, that has this kind of technology for example amazon mining all the technology they they have you as a producer maybe you don't have that access to but they you will be able to get into that one good that is a good one any other No more. There are many, of course. <clears throat> so, how to work with a 3PL, third party logistics? We're going to watch a second video. And at the end, you are going to tell me what you understand on this. Let's see how it goes. I'm Jesse Janae, and this is Shipping Things. And today we're talking about 3PLs. Are they right for your business? And how do you figure out how much it will cost you? stands for third-party logistics. It's basically a layer in your supply chain helping you with the logistics piece. And I know that sounds a little complicated, but it's actually really simple. Think of it like this. Your business makes a product and then delivers it straight to the customer. That would essentially be a 1PL. 
Then if you start involving shippers like UPS or FedEx, now you've got someone in between, that's a 2PL. And then let's say you supply a warehouse with your product, which then ships it onto the customer on your behalf. That, my friend, is a 3PL. A 3PL is a physical warehouse that helps you with things like freight, warehousing, distribution. And they can even be industry specific, like cold storage for food businesses. But if you're an e-com, you're gonna to wanna to look for one that specializes in inventory management, fulfillment, and returns. If you're asking yourself whether you're big enough to start working with a 3PL, that actually isn't the best question. Figuring out whether a 3PL is the right fit for your business all comes down to the math. So let's jump into how 3PLs charge. 3PL usually has four base fees. It starts with storage. They're gonna charge you for how much space your stuff takes up in their facility. Then you've got picking. Picking is what you pay for having a human being walk around their facility, grab your stuff, and put it in a box. Then you've got packaging. Any packaging you haven't already prepaid for or sent to them, they're going to charge you for. And finally, postage. Postage is what you pay for actually shipping your product to your customer. I just wanna remind you that 3PLs have a really hard job to do too. It's almost like fractional ownership of a warehouse. Instead of you having to own a big facility and pallet racking and have employees doing shipping every day, they do that on your behalf. They also have incredible software systems a lot of times that help your business run like a well-oiled machine. So how do you know if you're picking the right 3PL for your business? Well, here's a few criteria. Location. It's really important that the location of the warehouses is nearby the manufacturing or geographically optimized for where you're shipping. Then price. We already talked about all the different fees, but make sure to really do the math, open a spreadsheet, plan it out. Packaging. A lot of 3PLs will not actually work with custom packaging, so make sure you plan out exactly how you want your product to look before selecting a partner. And finally, scalability. So really important to know exactly how many facilities your 3PL has and whether they fit in with your growth plans. Think about where your business is gonna be in a year. Are they a good fit for you then? Choosing a 3PL is sort of like choosing a mate. They're gonna have all your inventory and you're gonna be working with them constantly to make sure your customers are happy. So make the decision wisely. You do not, you do not want a nasty breakup. Good, what did you understand about this one? Anybody? Yeah. About the, the three, three PL, uh, cheers and play, uh, that's uh, for any company, uh, it's, it's more cheap, uh, High, no, higher, 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 yeah, higher, higher, um, uh, this, this, uh, company, this type of company, for Very example, good. go ahead, go ahead, uh, the, the storage, uh, for example, and change in the, the company, don't have eh, entregar teacher, how do you say entregar? Deliver. Delivery, the product, uh, uh, client by one by one. Um, Very good. The Perfect. company could, uh, can use the, and the, the word uh, with uh, 3 p.m. Perfect, definitely. So it's going to be cheaper for any company. Actually, she said that one. It's not important if you are a huge company or if you are a small company. You can have a 3PL, you can have a third party logistics. So uh, you just need to be careful on which one are you going to get partnered with. Good, any other opinion? Okay, uh, she mentioned at the end of the video that there are some things that we need to think whenever we're going to choose a uh, 3PL. 3PL. Yes, the location, the 
Christ, the packaging, and the last one, I don't understand. <laughs> I look at like uh, some, oh my God, the scaling. I don't remember the word. <laughs> Scalability. Scalability, oh yes. <laughs> yes. I uh, did take my attention, the, the thing that they say at the end, uh, the location, is this near the, is this near the, the fabric or the the factory the, the factory yeah if you just need the factory the price the package the packaging and the scalability mm -hmm. very good you're definitely so there are the four things that you need to to think whenever you are choosing a 3pl so the the location if it's near where you are as the producer or at least it has facilities near the places where you are going to deliver the packages. The price, of course, uh, the packaging, because some 3PL, they do not have personalized packaging. And also um, the scalability, meaning that, uh, as we were saying before, right now I just need 10, 10 packages to be there. But suddenly I need 100 or 1,000 packages. So are they able to manage that? So that is something that we need. And I froze the video here in this part because this is like the fees that the 3PL charges for. For first of all, what is a fee? Do you remember what a fee is? The rate. Very good. It's the rate that you pay for, right? So a fee, it might be for many things. Uh, like for example, when you pay for something, anything. So there are th four, the ones that are there on, on, the, on the screen, there are four fees that they, they charge for. The first one is the storage. That means that uh, you are going to pay for the piece, uh, the location inside of the storage uh, that you are going to have your products on. So that is the first one. The other one is the picking, meaning that somebody place an order, a person is going to come and pick where is the, the uh, the product itself. The packaging, of course, that is the way that they are going to pack everything. And the postage in this case is the delivery, the carrier that is going to go and take that to the customer. So that is also very important. Those four fees that is going to be included on the price that the three PLs are going to charge you. So that is something that is very, very important. Okay, uh, any other thing that you may want to say about this video? Any comment, any questions? No questions. Very good, perfect. Nice, we have moved on. We're going to continue right now with not another video, but with the book. We need to move on with the book as well. So we are still in unit two about logistics building vocabulary so this is something that we know already and it says match these terms related to logistics to their meanings so on the column on the left is the the terms logistics supplies procurement distribution maintenance inventory management supply chain and on the other column on the right we have the meaning, the definition of each one. So we're going to read and check what will be the best options for that one. Let's see, uh, the first one. Um, Ricardo, could you please read? There was this process of supplying. Hello, Ricardo, are you here? Not here. Okay. Sandra, could you please read what it says? Process of supplying. Process of supplies goods to a store and other business that sell to consumers. Very good. So the process of supplying goods to stores and other businesses that sell to consumers. What is that one? Four, distribution. I'm sorry. Yeah, number four, distribution. Now. Distribution. Everybody um, agrees. No, I believe that is procurement. 
procurement. Everybody agrees? Supply chain. Supply chain. Well, we have three possible options. What is the correct option? Aha. Uh -huh. Anybody else? Supply. Aha. Correction. Supply. Uh, supplies. Mm, supplies yes. uh, is not a process, but the goods, right? Okay. Yeah. Anybody else's an opinion? Distribution, teacher. Distribution. Oh, is winning distribution by now? Mm, okay. Let's wait and check number two. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Right. Number two is going to be for Jancy. Jancy, could you please read? the network created. The network created um, one, among different companies producing, producing in distribution products. Perfect. Um, Go ahead. Network created. I don't know. So the network created is the network. That is a key. The it's network. Supply chain. Supply, supply chain. chain. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely supply chain. Very yeah. good. <laughs> supply chain. The network created amongst different companies producing and distribution product. Very good. That is supply chain. Good. We have one already. We missed the number one. That is uh, process of supply. The next one is going to be for um, Carla. Could you please read the next one? The ongoing process of moving parts and products into and out of a company's location. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is this one? The ongoing the process. Distribution. Distribution, everybody agrees? Inventory management. Inventory management. Mm -hmm. Logistics. Logistics. <laughs> what do you believe? The ongoing process of moving, moving parts and products into and out of a company's location. What could be this one? Mm. So we have only one that is for sure. That is the number two. Logistics. 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 Let's see. Okay, let's wait. And then we're going to analyze. Number four, uh, let's see. Pamela, could you please read the next one? Uh, the coordination will be many people, facilities or supplies. Uh -huh. The coordination, this is the coordination of an operation involving many people, <laughs> facilities or supplies. So what is logistics. it? Logistics. Oh, logistics. this is logistics. Yeah, that is for sure. <laughs> because it's everything, right? So this is logistics. Good. And, so and 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 three teacher or so. Uh, so let's wait and let's see the other ones. Okay. <laughs> so or we have car teacher. Yeah, I mean the thing is that we need to analyze. Sometimes the words are similar, but in all the definitions there are keywords that we need to understand. So for example, in the first one is the process. It's a process of supplying goods and stores and other businesses, okay? And in the fourth one, it says the ongoing process of moving parts, but we're going to analyze on that one, okay? So the next one is going to be for, let's see, Nelson, could you please read the next one? The process of keeping some time in good condition. The process of keeping something in good condition. Which one is this? Maintenance. Maintenance. Very good. This is maintenance. Very good. Mm -hmm. Maintenance. Okay. Good. We have three already when we missed two. Nice. So 
the next one is going to be for, let's see, Mayra, please. Okay, the act of obtaining or buying goods and services. Okay, the act of obtaining or buying goods and services. What is this? Procurement. 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 Okay. Procurement. This is procurement. Very good. So we have more. Nice. The last one is for floor. Hello, floor. Yes, we teach. Okay. The amount of a good or service offered for sale. Okay, the amount the of amount. a good or service offered for sale. Which one is this? Supplies. Supplies. This one is supplies. <clears throat> okay, so now we just missed the first one and the third one. Let's analyze on that one. And we have only distribution. And what is the other that we miss? Inventory uh, management. Okay, so I believe that now you know, right? So yes. on the first one, it says process of supplying goods to store and other businesses that sell to consumers. Which one is this? Distribution. This one is distribution. Very good. So the last one, it says, the, well, not the last mm -hmm. one, the third one, the ongoing process of it's moving parts itself into and out of a company's location. And that is? Inventory management. Inventory management. Because it's to move in and out. Very good. So that is clear now. Good. So we can do this when you are not sure. When you have many things and you are not sure about what is the correct answer, you can move to the next and then you can come back and be sure that you have the correct answer. Also remember that in all definitions, there are keywords. So for example, in the first one, process is a keyword. And the other is to stores and other businesses. Oh, that is distribution. With that, we know that is distribution. So in the other one, network is a keyword amongst companies. The next one, ongoing process, so movement. When it's ongoing, remember that this is a preposition of movement. So it's to move something, of course. So every definition is going to have keywords that we can analyze. But let's, let's check onto that one. And says, read the definitions below, then complete the sentence on the processes using words from the box. Mm, so let's see here. Um, let's see. Osmin, could you please read the first sentence where it says inbound logistics? Okay, teacher. Okay. Inbound logistics concerns the, the relationship between, between companies and, and, the, and they are surprised. Why they are surprised? Why? Uh, a long logic deals with how companies get products to their customer. Very good, perfect. So we have two different kinds of logistics here, inbound logistics and outbound logistics. And here is like the definition. Inbound logistics concerns the relationship between companies and their suppliers. So the raw materials that I'm going to receive, the, I mean, anything that I will use for me to create my products. And the outbound logistics deals with how companies get products to their customers. So inbound is suppliers to me. Outbound is from me to customers. That is it. And we have here some, some things. So for example, customer service. Is that inbound or outbound logistics? What do you think? Outbound logistics. Outbound. Everybody agrees? Yes, definitely that is outbound because it's the, from me to the customers. A warehouse, is that inbound or outbound logistics? Mm 
inbound logistics. Inbound. Yeah, because, well, actually this can be both. Uh, speaking about suppliers that we are going to use to build our products, it can be inbound. But speaking about the product that we're going to distribute, that might be outbound. So this can be both. Transport is inbound or outbound logistics. Outbound mm -hmm. logistics. Yeah, that is outbound because it's meaning of transport, transporting things to our customers. Production <laughs> planning is that inbound or outbound? Inbound. Yeah, it can be inbound because you can plan and then you can decide which materials we need so we can produce, right? And the last one, it says purchasing. In, inbound. Well, actually, that's inbound. 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 inbound because we are going to inventory. purchase supplies. Inventory, supply inventory. Exactly, so we are going to get inventory okay. so we can produce, right? Get so, inventory. Yeah. Very good. And there is like a little graphic, inbound logistics and outbound logistics. Do you have any questions about inbound and outbound logistics? Oops. Okay, but so. Warehouse, warehouse uh, being, being inbound. Uh, yeah, that might be inbound or outbound, as we were saying. Actually, in the same warehouse, we can have some materials, raw materials, and also finished goods. So it might be. Okay, okay so let's move on. It says, Unit 2, I will be able to express the advantages of outsourcing a 3PL service provider. And in the number one, it says, let's start. Have you heard the term third party logistics before? Of course you have, right? We here in the class, we've been speaking about a lot. Why do companies do 3PL, third party logistics? Aha, uh -huh, questions for everybody. Why do companies use 3PLs? For more efficient service. Very good, Osmin. So to be more efficient, to have more profit and uh, reduce costs. Very nice, that is it. Okay, so uh, the pair work, we're not gonna work in pair, we're gonna work together. It says number the steps to outsource a third party logistics provider. Okay, so um, we're going to read them all first and we're going to then check what will be the first one. So let's see, um, sell me, could you please read? All of it, please, the four. Yes, teacher. Uh, the introduction. And no, just the four, only. the four things, yeah. Develop a detailed plan for the 3PL selection process. Evaluate, interview, and select. Review the checklist of three PL capabilities. Do an internal assessment of your current and future needs. Perfect, thank you. So develop a detailed plan for the 3PL selection process, evaluate, interview, and select. Of course, we're speaking about the 3PL. Review the checklist of 3PL capabilities and do an internal assessment on your current and future needs. So the question is, which one is first? Evaluate interview and select, no, yeah. Okay, so Osmin says, uh, evaluate interview and select. What do you think, everybody? And do an internal assessment of your current and future needs. Yeah, that is the first one. Do an internal assessment of your current and future needs. So the first thing always is going to be to do an internal evaluation. What do I need? Okay, what are my needs and what I'm planning to have uh, in the future? So after that one, what is number two? Uh, 
Uh -huh. Develop a detailed and plan for the 3 pr selection process. Very good. That is the next one. Develop a detailed plan for the 3 pr selection process. Good. So what is number three? Evaluate interview. Evaluate interview and select. Mm, yeah, it could yeah. be. Yeah. Uh, actually, it says here select. Mm, that's the word that I don't know. Select is like the final part, right? When you decide. So in my opinion, it will be review the checklist of 3PL capabilities, and then you can evaluate, interview, and select. So you have, imagine that you have 10 3PLs. So in the first and second steps, you can still continue with the 10, but in the number three, uh, you can dismiss the most of them and keep only two or three. And then you can select. Good. So let's go to the next exercise, building vocabulary. Okay, match the terms related to logistics to their meaning on the right. This is going to be very similar to the one that we already made. Let's see, the first one, um, Ophelia, could you please read the first one? A function. Excuse me? Yeah, a function that allows. That is the one for you. Please read. Uh, a function that allows companies a risk setting to remove or minimize the risk associated a risk very uh, in clean in the investment. Okay. So a function that allows companies which rely to remove or minimize the risk associated with vehicle investment. So I'm going to read the, the terms first. Transportation, private fleet management, freight claim insurance, cargo insurance, and small package services. So the question is, which one is a function? Listen to the keywords, a function that allows companies which rely to remove or minimize the risks, risks associated with vehicle investment. What do you believe is the answer? Private fleet management. Private fleet management, everybody agrees? The cargo insurance. Cargo insurance, mm, that is a good one. I like that one. Insurance, remember that the uh, definition says risks. Risks associated with vehicle investment. Mm, yeah, I believe it's cargo insurance. Good. So the next one, please uh, read that one. Nelson. Envelopment or package shipment that weighs less than uh, 120 leo, leo. Wow. Okay, envelopes or packaged shipments that weigh less than 150 pounds. Small, small package services. Small package services, very good. That is it, small package services. Nice. The next one is for Ada Patricia. Okay. Provide protection against all risk of psychical loss or damage to freight. Okay. So provides protection against all risks. Hmm, we have risk again of physical loss or damage to freight. What it will be? Freight claim insurance. Very good. That is freight claim insurance. Definitely. That is it. That was very clear. Okay. The next one is going to be for Gloria Elizabeth. Hello, Gloria. Chair, I was. I was looking for the freight claim insurance uh -huh. and 
and the, um, here's mentioned that is uh, or is defined as a legal demand. So it's insurance against that one. So when you say that it's an insurance, a freight claim insurance is like. Um, for me, for me, for me, the, this one provides protection. It's a private fleet management for me. It could be. Yeah. No. Uh, also, also might be. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. we say that it's for freight because uh, in both we have freight, right? So, but it's going to be possible to have private fleet oh, management. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's possible. Good. Okay, Gloria, please read the next one. Okay. A legal demand by a shipper to a career for financial com compensation for a loss of the or the of or the match of achievement. Okay, so this is a legal demand by a shipper to a career for financial compensation for a loss or damage of a shipment. What do you believe is this one? Cargo insurance. Cargo insurance. Cargo insurance might be the answer for this one as well. Yeah. Sometimes there are some some um, definitions that are very open open to what we can believe is it. So it's not that clear here. But yeah, we can say that it's that one. Of course, the last one is going to be very easy. Let's see. It's going to be for uh, who hasn't read. Let me just check. Um, Ricardo, are you here with us? Hello. Could you please read the last one? They seek a process of transporting commodities and merchandise, good and cargo. Yeah, the physical process of transporting commodities and merchandise, goods and cargo. So that is? It's a transportation. Transportation, definitely. That was kind of clear as well. Very good, perfect. If you have a doubt, yes. you can read a little bit more about this uh, definition. Uh, tell me. Is como, bueno, como se pronuncia la parte esa que dice transporting commandai, así es. Commodities. Commodities, thank you. You're welcome. Very good. Any other question about this one? Uh, as I was telling you, if you, uh, these are very important if you are more in the contracts uh, or, or things like that. So contracts are very, very interesting, but they are very, very picky. Every contract for every service that you are going to get is going to be different. And there are different kinds of insurance, fleets, uh, compensations, uh, protections, clauses, so we can get in a contract. So this is more focused on that one. We haven't checked that because it's something that is kind of complicated. But of course, if you want to read about it, you can, you can do it. So you can understand a little bit better about these kind of situations. Um, let's see. So this is uh, advantages. Today we have been checking about advantages. Uh, it says, uh, discuss the following advantages of hiring a 3PL provider. Okay, let's see, we're gonna read, of course. Um, let's see. Uh, Flor, could you please read the letter A? Third party logistics service and provide customer satisfaction with a court ordering fulfillment and on time delivery. Very good. What do you understand on this one, Flor? about the satisfaction of the customer. Mm -hmm. It is very important because the exit and sales is a uh, ventas. Yeah, sales, yeah. Okay. Okay, very good. 
yeah, just remember uh, that if you have a very good third party logistics and they deliver on time and also the package is fine, customers are going to be satisfied and they want to purchase from you again. So that is it. Uh, letter B, uh, could you please uh, read that one, Rose? Three PLs, three PLs reduce current cost. Cost management is still the number one priority for cheapers. And three PLs often offer an advantage across the cost of the total operations. Good. What did you understand this? Um, all this about the cost. Uh, if you hire a three PL, your costs are reduced. And uh, yeah, well, that's it. You reduce your cost, the operation right. cost, and they no, you have a, an advantage across uh, of your total operation cost. That is it. So it's going yeah. to be easier, and of course, it's going to be with more profit for you because your cost is going to be reduced. You don't have to invest, yes. invest in too many things, right? Good. The last one, um, let's see, Nelson. Let me see. Yeah, please. PPL reduce rate risk. This includes a range of rates like onion issue, environment rights, and supply, supply chain performance rights. Good. What do you understand on this one? Mm. Where in the in the one inch PR is is when 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 we include in the lodges is in the in the when 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 I have to take the the move or rise and the, the person or their uh, the products uh, or capacity the 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 uh, human person okay I pretty think. good perfect thank you so yes definitely uh, this is something that we didn't touch that many in the other slides but yes uh, 3pls is going to reduce risk includes a range of risks like a union issue what is a union you know? Union issues. What is that? Partnership? It's not partnership. Mm. Partnership is the 3PL, but what is a union? Do you know? The association of the employees. Very good. So when the employees associate, and when they do not agree with the company, they go to strike. They say, I'm not going to work until I have more money or more safety or more of something or reduce the time of work or danger on anything. So that is a union. In the US, that is very common. I mean, they are free to do it. Here in El Salvador is also very common and it's free. But companies, they don't like that one. So they try to, to avoid those things, right? So uh, that is a union. That is a union. Very good. Uh, it says, so there are risks. I mean, imagine that in your company, you have a, a, a strike from a union. Oh my goodness, that is going to stop all your operations. And maybe in a month, you are going to lose all your business. So, but if you have a 3PL, a third party logistics, you don't have any risk. You say, okay, uh, I'm going to hire another person then. Bye, see you. That's it, right? 
And also says environmental risk. What can it be an environmental risk in your opinion? Environmental risk. Maybe the company, maybe it's a company that produces chemical product. Chemical products? I don't know. That might be. Environmental. I mean, yeah, it could be that they cause an impact to, to the environment. Sometimes, yeah. uh, sometimes also what happens is that, for example, do you remember in, where it was, in Georgia? I don't remember where it was, that there was a flood. A lot of water in the city. So uh, if that happens to your 3PL, you can get another one. I mean, that is it. Or if there is an earthquake, or if there is an avalanche or anything that happens, I mean, it's not your business. You say, okay, my friend, I'm sorry to what happens to you, but I need to continue my life, right? <laughs> my business. So that happens sometimes when it's a lot of rain. In the U.S., there are a lot of hurricanes and a lot of things that impacts businesses. Sometimes when there are risks like that, I mean. Oh, it's more a uh, risk like, like a hurricane and flow. Oh, okay. That, that kind of risk that, uh, okay, there is in the environment. Okay, I yeah. understand. Yeah. That will be it. So sometimes yeah. Mother Nature gets something right. And okay. That is it. Good. And the last one, I guess, is very clear. Supply chain per performance risk. That means that uh, if something is going on to the supply chain, you can always uh, get one, two, three th third party logistics so they can help you with this one. Even, you know, that uh, even it's possible to have a, three, a third party logistics for your supply chains. I mean, for your raw materials and things like that. So um, of course that is managed for by the, the company that is sending us the products and services. Good, good, good. So uh, do you have any questions before we, uh, we almost finish actually? Any questions? No questions, clear as horchata, as usual. Okay, so uh, what is your opinion? I believe, I believe that some of you, you didn't know anything about logistics before this class. So how do you feel now that we are learning about logistics? How do you feel about that one? I feel good. Nice learning a little bit more, right? Any other opinion? Yes, I learn uh, <laughs> I want to learn more. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. <clears throat> yes. I, really... I was thinking in learn more some course, I don't know. <laughs> After I finished my English, oh my God. <laughs> but <laughs> no, yeah, I, I like it. I love it. Yes, I love it. Good. <clears throat> okay, very good. So any other opinion about logistics in general? We haven't finished, of course, but we, you cannot give an opinion. It's, it's a high mm -hmm. level, but uh, that's we trying. Very good. So is sí. uh, uh -huh. uh, Sorry, sorry. Continue. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, please. Okay, no. was very interesting because... I don't, I don't have idea all process that have in a, in, in in this topic. Yeah, there are many things involved. I mean, and for every every product around the world, I mean, if you go to the market and you buy mangoes, that has logistics, right? I mean, there was a process that the producer, they have a lot of trees of mangoes and they take care of the trees and a lot of things. There are many things. So whenever you purchase, whenever you buy anything, anything, 
there is a logistical process there. Imagine any, the, the logistics to anything, make a cup of coffee. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Anything I, I need to logistic? That is it. For anything. Those, for those function. That is it. And you know, another interesting thing is that you can, you can adapt logistical processes in your workplace, How in your house. Yes. Yeah, you say yes. I'm going to accommodate this or it's generally, easier. Generally like? So it's, it's and very... another word, another word is the logic is important, everything. Yeah, for everything. Every single thing comes with logistics. So now we are very happy because we know a little bit more. Of course, next week we are going to continue with this topic. That is amazing. I really love logistics, to be honest with you. It's hard, it's difficult. I won't lie to you. If you work in logistics, I mean, you work very hard. Sometimes you have to work Saturdays and Sundays. I was working for a factory once in logistics. I spent six months working from Monday to Sundays. Six months. It was crazy. It okay. was. But it was very good as well. <laughs> so, anyways, it's very nice. We're going to finish then. It was a pleasure to be here with you. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. And... Uh, try to practice English, of course. Before we finish, of course, we're going to check the attendance. <clears throat> okay, Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present, good night. Good night. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present teacher. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. A usted le toca el 101 ahora, Ofelia. Yes, teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solorzano. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Jancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Present. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara, good night. And Susana Carolina Hernandez Iraeta. Present, good night. Good night. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure again. I hope you have a very nice weekend. Rest a lot and see you on Monday. Okay, good night. Happy good weekend. Night. Happy weekend, everybody. See you on Monday. See you on Monday. I'll see you. See you, Tom. Have a nice yeah. week. Okay. Hello, Ophelia. How are you? Hello. How are you? How are you? Thank you. Very well. Bueno, gracias por quedarse ahora entonces en el 101. Eh, vamos a hablar un par de cosas. Usted ya tiene experiencia entonces con los 101, ¿verdad? porque yo me imagino que ha estado, no sé si desde el principio, pero sí ha estado ya en varios módulos. Entonces, perfecto. La primera pregunta es, ¿cómo siente que va? ¿Siente que va aprendiendo, que va avanzando? Sí, 
eh, me cuesta, pero voy a, eh, hoy voy a entenderlo más, porque cuando hice el dictado, me fijé que hoy ya puedo escribirlo, porque antes no podía escribir. ¿no? Qué bien, me alegra mucho. Uh -huh. Sí, a veces es complicado la, la pronunciación de las palabras y cosas por el estilo, pero si se va, si va aprendiendo, pues ahí vamos encaminados. Eso es importante. Ok, la siguiente pregunta es, de hecho, si usted tiene alguna pregunta o duda con alguna, algún tema, alguna palabra, vocabulario, gramática que haya visto, no solo en este módulo, sino en el módulo anterior. Eh, hay una cosa que me cuesta entender lo que el significado va. Porque yo trato no, no traducir al español, entenderlo así primero en inglés y después saber qué es. Porque si me pongo a traducirlo, después ya le pongo más atención a la traducción. Si sí, fíjese que esa es una buena técnica, la verdad es que no hay que traducir. A veces sí tenemos que saber, ¿verdad? Qué es una palabra o cómo se utiliza, pero las palabras muchas veces tienen muchos usos, muchos, no es que significa una cosa nada más sino que significa uh -huh. o se puede usar de muchas maneras. Entonces, sí, eso es muy bueno, que usted vaya comprendiendo y analizando los usos de la palabra, pero no traducirlos. Sí, y hay una cosa que no he entendido, porque hoy en esta clase, cada ratito me he estado sacando el, el internet, no sé si se ha fijado, que entro, salgo y así estoy, pero tengo el teléfono y, y, y la computadora. Sí, eso estaba viendo que estaba conectada en dos partes, pero mira, a veces eso sucede, pues de hecho a mí me pasaba al principio y tuve que hacer algunos arreglos aquí en la casa para, para poder tener ya una estabilidad, porque pues a mí no me se me puede ir el internet, ¿verdad? Nos quedamos ahí. Ah, okay. Bien, pero entonces, pero una de las cosas que a veces le he recomendado a otras personas es que busque un lugar en la casa donde el internet es bien fluido, ¿verdad? Eso le ayuda, eh, igual pues hay que ver con la compañía, a ver cómo le pueden ayudar. ¿Tiene alguna pregunta de gramática, de vocabulario o algún tema que, que quiere que le explique? Eh, no sé si lo puedo repetir el tema de ahora porque no, no escuché muy bien hoy porque como me cortaba y me salía. Sí, fíjese de que, bueno, lo primero, los videos sí los alcanzó a ver. Sí, algunos cortados, unos enteros. Porque sí, lo... Ah, perfecto. Uh -huh. Sí, los videos estuvieron muy interesantes porque se ve exactamente lo que es la logística, ¿verdad? Se ve. Algo muy, muy bonito ahí. Igual estuvimos viendo de las ventajas, la ventaja de los 3PLs, que es los Third Party Logistics. Muchas ventajas entre las que están la reducción de costos, eh, la satisfacción del customer al final, porque si lo recibe a tiempo y si lo recibe en buen estado, se queda satisfecho. También estuvimos pensando en, en que aumenta el beneficio, o sea, aumenta la el dinero que le queda a la compañía, también que ya la compañía se puede dejar de preocupar por el transporte y la logística y enfocarse mejor en lo que le importa al negocio, que sería producir más productos o más una, una diversidad de productos, por ejemplo. Cosas por el estilo son las que estuvimos viendo ahora y el libro que lo estuvimos también chequeando. Estuvimos viendo algunas páginas del libro que vamos un poquito atrás. No, vamos cabalito, ahorita vamos bien. Entonces ya la otra semana vamos a avanzar un poco. La otra semana también ya nos toca hacer el midterm test, el viernes. ¿verdad? Entonces hay que, hay que estar enfocados también en eso. Pero eso sería lo de, lo de ahora. La verdad sería eso. Gracias, Ahora, una última pregunta, que de uh -huh. todo lo de inglés, ¿qué es lo que más le cuesta? O sea, nosotros uh, sabemos de que a veces cuesta hablar, entender, escuchar, leer, escribir. ¿Qué siente usted? ¿Qué es lo que más le cuesta? Es que en veces me cuesta escuchar y, y hay unas palabras que se me trago cuando estoy pronunciando. Okay. Quizá una de las recomendaciones que le puede hacer es que vea videos en inglés cortitos, no muy uh -huh. grandes videos de cosas que le interesan a usted, tal vez no cosas, cosas que tengan vocabulario difícil como recetas o plantas, sino cosas pues, del día a día, ¿verdad? Cómo hacer algo, cómo no hacer algo, y ahí va a ir viendo, ponga atención, trate de entender lo que dicen así nomás, escúchelo unas dos, tres veces, y luego le puede poner los subtítulos, pero en inglés. Entonces, al ponerle los subtítulos en inglés, usted ve cómo pronuncian las palabras, qué palabra dijo, y a usted ya puede buscar vocabulario y ir enriqueciendo esa parte. 
sí, eso le va a ayudar bastante entonces para, para ir mejorando, pero pues creo que si va entendiendo y siente que va avanzando, pues ahí vamos, ¿verdad? Aprendiendo, eso sí. es muy bueno. Vale, gracias. Perfecto, ¿alguna otra cosa, alguna otra pregunta que tenga, algo más que pueda hacer por usted? No, o sea, me, sí que una pregunta, pero pero ella de Insafofi, que a mí nunca me dijeron los diplomas que dicen, pero no sé. Mm, ok, voy a consultar. ¿Usted desde de, 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 de cuál módulo está acá? En, en... Desde el módulo 1. Desde el primero. Desde sí. el básico 1. Y, ¿Y nunca le llegó? No, nunca. Ok, bueno, lo voy a reportar a ver qué me dicen por ahí, a ver si, 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 si algo sucedió, ¿verdad? Ellos lo van a reportar mm. a Insafofi, a ver qué tal. Va, está bien, Perfecto, bueno, ha sido un gusto entonces, que tenga una feliz noche y un muy buen fin de semana y la veo el lunes. Gracias, que tengas noche. Good night, bye bye. Good night, bye bye.